Greetings, YouTubers and watch snobs. I am here to talk to you about the Amiga Seamaster Prebond. And here it is Omega Seamaster 200 Diver, aka the Prebond. Introduced in 1988, like so many other Omega divers, the Seamaster 200 was tied to an event touting its deep sea qualities. On July 25th of 1998, the Seamaster Professional 200 meter caliber 1111 took part in a French scientific submarine dive of 4,400 meters, which was a new record at the time. Blah, 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 who cares? Despite this very public launch, the Seamaster 200 was never really appreciated in its time, and in fact received its nickname, Prebond, as a result of the model that replaced it, the Seamaster 300 Professional sometimes called the Brosnan Bond. The nickname Prebond has become so commonplace that Omega even lists the line in its vintage database as such. Wow. The Seamaster 200 was produced until 1993, when it was effectively replaced by the Bond Seamaster 300. As stock ran out, Omega officially pulled the Prebond from their line in 1995. The end. Produced in a number of variations, the two most common are the all stainless steel model and the two-toned, which has a completely 18 karat gold bezel, along with gold markers and hands, with a gold-plated crown. A champagne dialed version is quite rare, and usually fetches a bit of a premium when on eBay or Chrono24. There were both 36mm and 40mm size versions, the 40mm of course was the most popular, and there were ladies variations as well. Those were quite popular in Japan. When removing the case back from the Prebond, one can find a number of movements in both quartz and automatic varieties. The watch you see here is powered by Omega's most accurate quartz movement, the thermocompensated 1441. It was replaced with the slightly less accurate 1438 after a single year in production so 1441 models are far more sought after. The automatic prebonds are far rarer, as the quartz to automatic sales ratio was 80-20. At first Omega used the caliber 1111 or 1111, a hackable 21 joule movement featuring quick sec date, ultra smooth sweep second, and a 44 hour power reserve. But at some point in 1992, Omega began using some 1109 or 1109 movements, which are of course almost identical to that of the 1111. So despite popular belief, the 1441 quartz is not the rarest prebond. That distinction belongs to the caliber 1109, which you see here in stainless steel. Ultimately, the Prebond was Amiga's attempt at regaining much of the relevancy it had lost during the Quartz catastrophe. As such, the quality of the Prebond was far superior to what was being produced by Amiga back in those wonderful 1980s. The Prebond featured a sapphire crystal, screw down crown, water resistance to 200 meters, luminous dots for the hour markers, luminous single indexes at 6 and 9, with a loom double index at 12, a date window at 3 and a square tooth notched 60 click unidirectional bezel. Very nice. The finishing was quite good on the watch and while not exactly up to today's standards, it's nothing to scoff at. The integrated Omega 1445 bracelet turned out to be quite a turkey in regards to Omega fans who lamented the fact that they could not switch it out for a strap. Ironically enough, the very same integrated bracelet is now one reason why people collect the Prebond. It's truly unique and different than anything else Amiga has produced. The Seamaster 200 was available in three finishes on the case. Uh, you had all stainless steel, stainless with 18 karat, and of course the black dial. Uh, that's known as the two-tone. And you had stainless and 18 karat with a champagne dial. The two tones also came with the option of a solid stainless steel bracelet or a stainless steel bracelet with inlaid gold links, which is what you see here. The clasp went through many variations, with my personal favorite being the first, featuring a solid gold Omega insert. Those frequently fell out, so Omega discontinued them. You can frequently find the all stainless prebonds with this particular clasp. I have never been able to verify if this was official or dealers just swapped the clasp where needed. 
Amiga also kept changing the case back for the Prebond, and they continually switched the design of the crown early in the run. There are a number of articles on this at Watch You Seek and Omega Forums, among elsewhere. I should also mention the Prebond was originally produced with Mercedes hands, but later switched to sword hands on the quartz model. The automatic was produced with Mercedes hands right up to the very end, and that is my preferred look. That being said, some autos do have the sword hands, so some were produced in that variation. Some say that the Prebond is nothing more than a Rolex Submariner ripoff, primarily due to the Mercedes hands. But I find that line of thinking to be absurd. Due to the integrated bracelet and case design, the Seamaster 200 is very much a standalone piece. It is unique in the line of dive watches of its era, and certainly unique in the history of Omega divers. The pricing of the Prebond on the used market has not really increased all that much over the years, but recently there has been a slow uptick. Because the model was not popular, the Prebond is surprisingly difficult to find in tip-top condition. People seem to buy, abuse, resell, and buy again, and uh, all too frequently the pieces sold now are in terrible condition and in need of a full service. Both of the full-size Prebonds I purchased were in extraordinary condition. The two-tone was gorgeous and had clearly been well-loved, but my automatic caliber 1109 was purchased from a dealer as a true new old stock piece. The dealer had it in a drawer for 20 years when it came into my hands. Needless to say, it is a stunning piece on my wrist. Hell, on any wrist. And slowly, over the past few months, has gone from what was a consistent plus 7 seconds a day to a consistent plus 1 second a day. That is truly astounding. While the classic vintage Seamaster 300 is my favorite diver, the Prebond is a close second. In an age where watches are increasingly thick and bulky, the Amiga Seamaster 200 Prebond reminds us that functionality and comfort are far superior to what is considered trendy.